Good day and welcome to tonight's edition of Sunday Politics, a political program for the benefit of you, the Nigerian citizen. I am Suleiman Suleiman. Nigeria's 2023 presidential election began almost 18 months ago, but it only ended last week. In the primary elections in May and June last year, Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the APC, Atiku Abakar of the PDP, Peter Obi of the Labour Party, and Rabiu Konkoso of the NNPP emerged flag bearers of the four major political parties in the country, that is, the APC, PDP, Labour Party, and NNPP, respectively. The campaigns for the general election officially kicked off in September last year, and on February 25th this year, about 26 million Nigerians out of the over 95 million registered voters took out to elect a new president. In that process, Ahmed Tinubu emerged the winner with 8.7 million votes. Atiku came second with 6.9 million votes. Obi came third with 6.1 million votes, while Konkoso came fourth with 1.4 million votes, respectively. All of these figures are according to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Tunibu also won 25% of the votes in 29 states. Atiku won 25% in 21 states, Obi won 25% in 17 states. According to the Nigerian constitution, anyone who will be declared president must win not only the simple majority, but also 25% in at least two thirds of the 36 states in the country. However, both Atiku and Obi disagreed with the results and headed to the presidential election petition tribunal, citing irregularities and other grounds for which President Tinubu should have, in fact, been, candidate Tinubu should have, in fact, been disqualified in the first place. After months of trial, the tribunal upheld Tinubu's election early last month. Obi and Atiku proceeded to the Supreme Court, the highest court in Nigeria, in their quest for justice. Last Thursday, the Supreme Court unanimously ruled in Tinubu's favor, ending months of legal battle between the three parties. So on this program on Trust TV tonight, we ask, which way forward for Nigeria after this verdict? What does the verdict mean for President Tinubu? And what does it mean for the opposition parties and indeed for all Nigerians? Joining me in the studios tonight is Mr. Jide Ojo, a development specialist, a veteran columnist with the Sunday, with the Punch newspaper, and a leading public affairs analyst in the country. Also with me tonight is Comrade Ibrahim Ismail Umar, a youth activist and politician with affiliations in the Labour Party. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. But before we proceed, we'll take a minute to look at background videos on this subject. Stay with us. We'll be right The legal battle for the presidency is finally over, following the Supreme Court ruling in favour of President Bola Tinubu, but for some, there are unanswered questions around the alignment of the judgment with the spirit of the law. Legal practitioners remain divided on the quality of the judgment and its impact on Nigeria's electoral process. At the Supreme Court, which was the court to uh, the court of appeal in regard to the case, it was at that stage that they start, wanted to start bringing fresh evidence. If you bring fresh evidence at that stage of appeal. Do you expect that the Supreme Court will just take your fresh evidence, which were mere allegations, without a trial on the issues? It is one thing for you to allege uh, a wrong in law. It's entirely a different thing for you to prove it. Because uh, the courts of law will not work with speculation, will not work with rumors. They work with hard evidence that is established before the court. I think that largely depends on how you define the concept of justice. But as a matter of personal principle, I don't think the courts actually go out of their way to seek justice, to dish out justice. That's what they call it, judgment. So what becomes justice in the floor of the court is not based on what you feel. Because at the end of the day, justice is a feeling. So it's mostly largely based on what you can prove. However, some people are not convinced that the Supreme Court served justice in its ruling. All right, the, 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 the people in the court were placed there by the present uh, president. Uh, so going to the court uh, with uh, the judge that they are put in place cannot be able to work because 
the president is the superior. It's not a new thing for Nigeria. Nigeria is not straightforward. Uh, our judgment is not, is not going to go straight as you need it. There's, there's never been a time in Nigeria where justice is always at it. It should always be the will of the people, not about the politicians. Well, whether you reject or you don't reject, it has been said. That is the highest court of the land. So we have to accept it. The coast is now clear for the Tinubu administration to implement its renewed hope agenda for Nigeria and Nigerians. Many hope this judgment will stimulate the government to bring about rapid growth and development of the country. Zainab Garay, Trust TV News, Abuja. Welcome back. This is Sunday Politics on Trust TV. And tonight we're discussing what happens after the verdict of the Supreme Court upholding the election of President Wala Ahmed Tinubu last week. And with me are two guests who are more than adequate to deal with the issue. So let, let, let me start um, with the opposition, if I may uh, use that term, you know. Uh, um, comrade, the, 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 the entire process has been, you know, the legal case has taken eight months you know, the election itself has been, you know, 10 months before those eight months, so more or less Nigeria has been in election mood for 18 months. Is that, is that, is, is that good for a country? Why don't elections end at the ballot box? Yes, uh, you know, justice mm. um, is the thing we are craving for, and mm. we can't stop fighting for justice. Mm. And, you know, a, a just society mm. is what define democracy we just need a decent society that rule of law will be respected so as far as i am concerned i don't think it's not good for our democracy to have this long process so long as it's going to bring a fruitful result so um, nigerians should be patient and we believe that one day justice will definitely prevail um after the does it mean you feel you have not had justice now Definitely. I did not believe in that illusion called justice in Nigeria mm. since before they even stated it. Mm. I did not believe, I don't have that confidence in them that they are going to be just. Mm. Because explicitly mm. it, was it, it is enshrined in the constitution that FCT is independent. Mm. But in the interpretation of the law, mm. they said FCT is one among the state. Mm. Despite the fact that you know FCT um, doesn't have um, a lot of um, criteria as the state we have in mm. Nigeria. Mm. So for me, it's an utter shambles and I do not consider this um, judgment at all as justice. Mm. More or less I consider it as manipulating mm. the, electoral, um, the judiciary and the electoral uh, umpires to but, but, but when people say something like manipulating the judiciary, don't you think, even as a politician and especially as a youth activist, don't you think they are bound to provide evidence for that? Because yes, if you say judiciary is being manipulated, it's also a way of saying that a crime is being committed. And to, prove, to say that a crime is being committed presupposes to produce evidence for that crime. Yes, that's why we, so? go, we go to a peaceful and legal process in getting our justice. Mm -hmm. We went through the court mm -hmm. and we pro provide our evidence, mm -hmm. which quite unfortunately they said it, is, isn't, it, it isn't enough mm -hmm. for them to consider us. Mm -hmm. But you know, I know and Nigerians know mm -hmm. that what we brought to them was more convincing mm -hmm. than what they um, uh, APC brought to them. Thank you. I'm a journalist. I don't know anything right now, but let's let, let's proceed, uh, 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 Mr. Gide Ojo. The, the 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 we have been at this for a long time, since February, March, you know, June, July, August, September, now October ending. You know, is this not taking a toll on the system itself? You know. Just not the not, not just the candidates, but the system itself. Is this how? Because virtually every presidential election in Nigeria, except for 2015, has been contested in this country. W w w why is that keep happening? Why it keeps happening is because we have a political class 
that just does not want mm. democracy. Interesting. And it's either their way or highway. Mm. And as to whether this is good for us, um, litigation in itself is uh, a peaceful way of resolving conflict. Absolutely. Mm. And we have been told in Lehman Elementary School that conflict is inevitable in life. Mm. So the God that gave wisdom mm. for some people thousands of years ago mm. to set up an adjudicatory system, mm. that God is not daft. Mm. And you see, justice is like a double-edged knife. Mm. Every time you go to court, mm. A judge wins a friend and wins an enemy. That's why judges are protected by law. Mm. Have you seen uh, policemen, go, you know, protecting lawyers? Mm. They don't. But a judge has an oddly, mm. at least to give a semblance of protection, because they know that. You cannot, you cannot, it's not every case you strike a win-win situation where you try to, I mean, even in the biblical Solomonic uh, judgment about a disputed child, mm -hmm. about who owns a child. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're, I know you're a Muslim, but it's also, you, you could see that mm -hmm. in a way to, to arrive at, mm -hmm. a, at justice, he mm -hmm. said, okay, if both of you are laying claim, let's divide the child. Mm. The woman who owns the child said, no, rather than kill this child, mm. give it to this other woman. Mm. And that told the king, this woman is the owner of that child. Mm. But do you think the one who lost will sink the praise of the king? Of course not. He complain. He, he will say, will say "Oh, justice. maybe, mm. maybe that woman has left with the king." Mm. <laughs> That's why, right. you know. Yeah. So I, I'm so used to people complaining about judiciary. Mm. I, I, if they don't complain, it then means that we have ceased to be the society, a litigious society that we are. Mm. Now, let us look at whether we can short circuit the process. Mm. I've had privilege of observing election in four other countries apart from Nigeria. Interesting. From US to Egypt mm. to Ghana to Uganda. Mm. And these countries could not have been more different in terms of... Exactly. Yes. Mm. Now, do we want to go the route of mm. Uganda mm. and Kenya mm. where any petition arising from presidential election goes directly to the Constitutional Court or the Supreme Court of the country. In, in Uganda, it goes to what they call Constitutional Court. In Kenya, it goes to Supreme Court. And the court has just two weeks to decide on that case. Now, people talk about fair hearing. You have 176,846 mm. polling mm. units. Polling units in the country. Mm. You have 8,809 wards. Mm. You have 768 local government and six area councils, making 774. You have 36 states and FCT. Now, to prove a case of electoral fraud, the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal has shown that you start from polling unit. My brother's party decided to go and hire a cloud engineer to download and say, oh, uh, this result was not uploaded on time. The court has since said to that years back that, 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 that you need for any you you see for you because because you know um, um, election is said to be sui generis is in a word of its own. Yes. Now, in in, in an election dispute, is akin to criminal allegation, mm. 
And in criminal allegation, he who alleges must prove. And not just prove, must prove beyond reasonable doubt. So the court will say, you said you were rigged out. Huh? Fine. In which polling unit? You cannot see everywhere. Everywhere is nowhere. Mention the polling unit. Now, mention what, if you say, I need for the party that won. Okay, you have a polling agent. Can we have your result vis-a-vis -vis the one I need gave? Is there a difference? That's how you start to prove. And now, where I'm going, okay. Dr. Suleiman, where I'm going is that, where I'm going is that, can you have justice if you limit election dispute resolution, particularly presidential election dispute resolution, to two weeks? Where will you gather evidence? Mm, the bureaucracy, of the, 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 size bureaucracy of the, the size of the country. And you have to gather, and, and the, work, the, the court does not work on hearsay, does not work on their parlor gossip, does not believe, oh, but, somebody but says something. The news will be that. The, the, those who are alleging must uh, prove, and, and then do you gather the evidence, evidence during the election? And even not only collecting, mm. processing. Okay. Because it's not all the evidences you collect that are uh, admissible in, in court. court. You understand? You, is, you have to still see through. That and, and put that's why. But let me bring that's in why, the Sorry, let me land on this. That's <laughs> why you will say at the beginning. A petitioner will say, I have 50 witnesses I want to call. For each of those witnesses, we have not talked about exhibit. Mm. You want to call 50 witnesses. Each of those witnesses, when they bring them to trial, you as a petitioner will first uh, 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 examine yes. them. Mm. Then the other parties mm. in this room will cross-examine them. Yes. I will only you bring 50 people. Others also need to bring their own people mm -hmm. to also say what you discredit mm -hmm. was well done. Yes. So everything still has to be time in a, 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 a time frame. We didn't have this time frame until 2011. Mm -hmm. It used to be open-ended. Yes. But the same politician allows this petition to drag mm -hmm. so long that out of four years that a tenor should be thank you three years and a half you may be in court thank without you. judgment being given thank you uh, uh, comrade I, I can see you have a lot of reactions to what he has said and you will have enough time to 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 react but among the things he said in fact the first thing he said is because we are in this situation because nigerian politicians do not want us to have democracy and you are a, 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 a politician do you think that that is the reason that politicians are the ones, in fact, uh, are playing politics with the process, with our democracy? No, I absolutely did not believe in that. Mm. And I have some reasons to back up my claims. Okay. Mm. Um, I would like to start with the thoughts. Mm. There is a, st a saying that the darkest place in health mm. is reserved for those who maintain their neutrality mm. in terms of moral cri crisis. Mm. And with that thought, I believe um, leadership is the most important part of human endeavor. Mm. So we, we must respect that. Mm. And as humans, we sh it shouldn't be talking based on sentiment always mm. or what favors us. As far as I am concerned, I am of young age, I know. But I know that 23, uh, 2023 election mm. was um, a, a, a INEC mm. make it clear to all the political parties that there is a technology behind the 2023 election, okay. which is the beavers. Mm. And that beavers at long run, which it's literally told us mm. that, uh, that old INEC uh, guidelines are just like line mines, mm. that once you accept them, you are, they are going to deny it and refer to the constitution. Mm. At long run, they deny the guidelines and say they had glinch on this technology mm. that they brought themselves. And billions of naira was paying on that technology mm. to the detriment of ordinary citizens. Mm. And again, um, they, they talk about... But, but, but that all of this has been decided by the court. Yes. And a verdict has been handed out. And there's no space no legal or legitimate space again for contesting that space, except maybe something that will look like contempt of court. Because 
it is incumbent on educators and people, parties to a case. If you take a case to court, you are not only seeking justice. You are also saying that whatever the court says, you will accept it. That's why you are going to the court in the first place. So this judgment has been concluded. A verdict has been declared. What is the way forward for the opposition parties now? Yes, the way forward for us mm. uh, as um, opposition party, mm. we are planning on mobilizing our um, making st uh, structures across mm. um, all the pooling units, mm. local governments, mm. to make sure we become a constructive mm. opposition in the country. Very good. And as you know, we are obedient. Mm -hmm. So we are going to follow due process, mm -hmm. legal and peaceful process, mm -hmm. in making sure that we take back our country mm -hmm. from the shackle mm -hmm. of insecurity, mm -hmm. from the shackle of poverty. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we have to be just to ourselves, okay. irrespective of our affiliation and reservations. Mm -hmm. We must all have the conscience and sympathy over how degraded and abused the least privilege has become. And putting all politics behind and the future of the country in front. Mm -hmm. And Nigeria's population is projected mm. to grow over 500 million by the year 2040, mm. which will make it to become the third most populous country on earth. Mm. How do you project our future beyond 2040? Mm. That's you. our question. Mm. Thank you. I, I will take you on some of these issues because they are very important issues that uh, you are laying out. But let me bring uh, Mr. Zido Ejo to this discussion. Uh, um, uh, what does this verdict mean for the president, the man who's uh, election has been upheld by the court. But before you answer, let me tell uh, our viewers that this is a program in which you can also participate. We'll be throwing our phone lines open so that you call us uh, and to ask your questions or make a contribution. When you do, just tell us your name and where you are calling from and go right ahead to make your contribution or ask a question. So, Mr. Jideodo, what does it mean for the president? So, what it meant for him is the coast is now clear. Okay. What you could only pray for is divine health and security. Mm -hmm. um, he gave an eight point renewed hope agenda. Mm -hmm. Eight point. I'm not a member of APC, so mm -hmm. I have nothing at stake. A lot of people have been saying, Our local, a me local. Mm -hmm. Whoever yeah, no, is, among that. I'm mm. not among I'm not <laughs> among them. Mm. I didn't serve, I didn't canvas vote for anybody. But you see, we now have a country to govern. Whether Anek did well or didn't do well, whether the judiciary do, did well or didn't do well, politicians are of the same hue. There is no one that will be in power today that will not be criticized because the state of the nation mm -hmm. is appalling. Doc, I have said it on this program mm -hmm. and other program mm -hmm. that whoever inherited government from Buhari mm -hmm. will not have an honeymoon. Interesting. And it has come to the fore. Is our lives getting better? Barely four, five months of Tinubu. Of course, it's getting from bad to worse. Mm. Cost of living is rising. Mm. The economy is in shambles. Mm. Not in my life, I'm over 50 years, not in my life have we seen mm. Nigerian currency exchanging for 1,300 to a dollar. Never. It has never. This is the highest. And we, some people are projecting that by December it may get to $1,000 or $2,000 to a dollar. So Nigerian currency is becoming more like a Zimbabwean dollar of those days under Mugabe. So the, what this judgment of last Thursday did for President Tinubu is that he can now face governance squarely without distraction. He now has the yam and the knife. the knife. How he wants to govern Nigeria, no one will say, I was looking over my shoulder. I didn't know whether the judiciary will endorse my candidacy. You know, we, we, the, the situation was such that everybody was on tenterhooks because, look, Elisha Abu from Adamawa won at the court of first instance, but lost on appeal. He's a gunner. He can only appeal to God. Mm. 
So, you know, the, when you get to the final bus stop, anything can happen. There is, yes, no presidential election has previously been annulled, but there will always be a first time. It didn't happen, it has never happened in Kenya until 2017, and it did happen. But, of course, that election was annulled, but Uru Kenyasta still won because the opposition that took him to court decided to boycott the election. Mm -hmm. So of what benefit was even the nullification in the first place? Mm -hmm. But you see, truth has many color. Mm -hmm. To people who are uninformed, who are uninitiated, people, uh, many of us, in fact, if you, if you ask Nigeria, mm -hmm. Over 200 million of Nigerians. Mm. How many have ever had a case in court? To be the, the majority. You you will find out that those who have gone to court may not be more than 10 yes. percent of the entire population. Maybe one percent. Maybe I'm, yes. I'm, I'm just being magnanimous. Yes. So when if true, if that is established to be truth, that maybe a fraction or 10 percent have ever had a case in court, how would you and I know how court works if we have never tested it. So people rely on hearsay. So ah, they have rigged us out. I ask, even about this 2023 election, mm -hmm. ah, you said they rigged you out. So whoever wants to rig Tinubu to presidency didn't know it's better to rig FCT mm -hmm. so that there will be no litigation. Yes. He didn't know that no 25 he, he, there will be no 25 percent. He didn't know he needs to rig Lagos for him mm. because that is his base. Yes. He didn't know he needs to rig Goshen for him because that is his base. Mm. He didn't know he needs to rig Kano for him. Mm. He didn't know he needs to rig Delta. Mm. Even Casino, where the former president was, yes. these are places where Kaduna. he lost. Mm. You know, if, I mean, let's, let's not even say Kaduna, but I, I'm saying, President Buhari was from Katsina. Yes. Tinubu lost Katsina. Mm. All the KK states he lost. Mm. He lost Katsina, lost Kaduna, mm. lost Kano. Mm. Lost Lagos. He has never when lost he Lagos. One K state, Kevin. <laughs> Maybe. But what is the population? And what is the voting population of Kebi? What is the voting population of Kebi and Kwara? Yes. So what I'm saying invariably is that let, let's let's just History would vindicate whether INEC bungled or did not bungle this 2023 election. Thank you. But what people fail to realize is that it, there are hierarchy of laws. And when I say hierarchy of law, the Constitution is the grand law, followed by the Electoral Act, followed by INEC guidelines and an handbook and, 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 uh, and manual. You cannot say that what is in the handbook and manual is, is superior to what the Constitution says. And that all of this, you will not know unless you have ever had a case in court. In court. Mm. So the point is for Tinubu now, he has no one to blame. Mm. If he's able to turn around the situation of the country, he has these three and a half years left of his administration to do that. If he wants to be remembered for, because like he said at the beginning of this administration, he said, don't pity me, I ask for this job. Yes. Now he asks for it, he has gotten it, let's see what he what makes he of it. Thank you very much. Um, 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 uh, comrade, you, he, he talked a lot about what the president needs to do, uh, what the tax is before uh, uh, ahead of him, but in his speech, you know, shortly after the Supreme Court verdict, uh, uh, President Tinubu himself, you know, he kind of uh, spoke to the opposition parties to join hands with him, to work with him, that we are all members of the same household, even though we may belong to different rooms. So whereas we may have different parties, Labour Party, PDP, APC, we are all Nigerians. We all belong to the same Nigerian family, and we should join hands together to, to work for the country. That's what he said, you know. What does this mean to the opposition, uh, uh, to the opposition, the Labour Party and, 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 and PDP? And if you accept this or don't accept it, how, what is the framework for this joining hands together can be like? But maybe before you answer, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be right here for you on Sunday Politics. Stay with us.
Welcome back. This is Sunday Politics on Trust TV, and we are discussing what happens after the Supreme Court verdict. And I go straight back to you, comrade. Uh, so what happens? Would you join hands with the president, and how would you do so? No, absolutely not. Um, you know, you can approbate and reprobate mm. in law. Mm. We did not agree. Mm. Just a moment. We have a caller on the line. Yes. Uh, well, can, can I continue? Can yes, I, continue. Can Tell I us go? your name and where you're calling from. Yes. I said I'm Joe. Joe Samuel. Okay. Go ahead, Joe. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Abuja. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Joe. Yes. What I want to say is this. People should have conscience to their, uh, you know, what they claim they want to have. The people should just respect what God has done. One cannot say because what you expected has not come. Oh, yes, that, it, do, it doesn't go that way. Therefore, whoever we think should be a person to be uh, a, a sacrificial lamb for your own uh, selfishness. So people should try to know that what God has done, nobody can change it. They are not a politician, but then we should look for a way where Nigeria can move forward and stop you know, discrimination, uh, tribalistic sentiment, and uh, religious uh, differences. We are one. That is my contribution. Thank, Thank you, you very much, uh, Mr. Joe. Call him from Abuja. So he's how we just he is saying just like the president, uh, the opposition should work together with him. And but you said no. So <clears throat> yes, as I was saying, you can approbate and reprobate in law. Mm -hmm. I know we are dealing with people that have no or little um, concern about the rule of law. Okay. But regardless, mm -hmm. we believe in this country, mm -hmm. and we believe this country is go only going to work. Mm -hmm if the rule of law starts to count. So we are not going to give up. We are not going to give in. Mm -hmm. um, we are questioning the process that brought him to the seat. Okay. So a joining hand with him is literally like deceiving Nigerians mm -hmm. that believe in us, mm -hmm. that voted for us. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's something that we are going to accept. We love Nigeria, and we love to see Nigeria So work. it's opposition till the end? Yeah, yes, it's not like opposition. We are fighting for, uh, uh, for the just cost. We are fighting for Nigerians. Mm. When we fail, just Nigerians fail. Okay. Mm. Go ahead. Mm. Nigerians, Nigerians fail. It's not Peter Obi. It's mm. not I just got another caller. Uh, let me remind our guests that our callers have the right of way once the calls are starting come, to come through. But of course, you can respond to whatever questions or contributions that uh, they make. Yes? Your name and where you're calling from, please. Yeah, uh, good evening. Good evening, yes. Yeah, my, my name is Shamaiki from Nasarawa State. Shamaiki from Nasarawa State. Please go ahead, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, once again, good evening. Good evening. Uh, the, yeah, the analysis is still there. Uh, I, I thought this uh, issue uh, 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 become a, a very issue already. Mm. Because what I'm saying is because the, the judgment has come and gone already. Mm. And, um, and then I expect the, the candidate, uh, that is a tickle and Obi, to extend hands hand of fellowship to uh, President Tinebu by advising him how he can move this country forward. Because already, let me put it this way, Nigeria is not getting already. Mm. So we are looking how things can, you know, uh, become uh, easier for every person as far as Nigeria is concerned. Mm. So I would love, any issue should be buried. Let's see how we can move this country forward by advising Mr. President, so this is my take. Thank, Thank you, you very much, uh, Shamaki. Calling from Nasara State. Mr. Didi Ojo, suppose the opposition, what is the framework for which opposition parties and their candidates can work together with the president to, to move the country forward since we have a winner takes all uh, political system in place? Well, already the president has uh, extended down the fellowship. Uh, recall that uh, the FCT minister, the substantive minister, is from the opposition. The minister of power, uh, uh, who is from uh, your state, is also from opposition. He is from a court party. Okay. But is this is in this government, 
as Minister of Power. Mm. You understand? In 2019, he was in APC, but ahead of 2023, he defected to our court. Mm. And that's the platform upon which he contested the election. So, uh, those two instances um, shows that the president was willing and ready to work with opposition. Mm. Um, individuals within the party may be called to serve in different capacities. Yes, you may not be offered a ministerial slot, but there is something called government of national unity. And we have seen it in the past, from Obasanjo regime to Yadua to Good Lord Jonathan. Uh, there have been attempts to, and, and interestingly, if you listen to the IPAC chairman, mm. uh, Engineer Yabagi, uh, uh, he has even called on uh, yeah. Yabagi Sonny, mm. he has even called on the president to involve the opposition parties in his government. Uh, and that they are willing to serve. So even if Labour Party says, no, we don't want to have anything, you can only speak for yourself. Oh. Because there are millions of members of Labour Party. And if, unless you have a consensus at the national level, because at the state level, state, you know, um, the governors can also reach out to the opposition to work with them. But it, it's not about appointments alone. You can contribute ideas. All of them have their own policy documents, yes. which they can courier to the president to take a look at and maybe borrow idea from some of their suggestions. I mean, we have 18 political parties that contested the presidential election. I believe 18 of them have their own policy document uh, that they intend to implement if elected. So now that they, they have lost that, they can as well have uh, their own policy document forwarded to the president for assessment and possible you know, extraction of ideas. There could also be what is called Interparty Advisory Committee Summit, mm -hmm. where IPAC as the umbrella body for all political parties can, work to, can, can have a summit a day or two or three days where the president will be invited and if he could listen in to bring ideas from the opposition on how the com company can be governed better. Because, look, Hunger knows no Labour Party Absolutely. or PDP or APC. Poverty. When I go to my neighbourhood market, they don't ask me for my membership card yes. of a party. So they ask for my money. Yes. So <laughs> that is to tell you that mm. this thing affects all of us. Even people in government, it's not all their family members that they can say to. Because how much are they honey? Unless they steal, mm. there isn't much money even as a minister. Recall that former uh, the Minister of Labor and, and Productivity, Dr. Chris Ngege, said yes. their salary as a Minister of Federal Republic is all up to one million. Mm. So, wh wh what is, so what is that kind of money that you think uh, you can use it to say to every member so of your family. Mm, thank you. That, one day we will talk about that, especially starting from the 160 million uh, uh, vehicles for, for, for us. Yes, yeah, certainly we will discuss that uh, on this program. But comrade, the, you don't want to join with the president. It's entirely the opinion of anyone to not join with anybody in a democracy. You know, there's no uh, blame or shame uh, uh, in that. But how do you propose to also uh, 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 help move the country forward because no one is happy where we are now, which is why people actually come out to contest elections in the first place. So how will you in your party or the opposition in general uh, uh, help to contribute towards moving the country forward without necessarily joining hands with the president, uh, as you said? Yes, you have to understand the motive behind um, the obedient movement in the first place to understand how are we going to help the country. The obedient movement is a movement that's aimed to emancipate you and I, the society in general. So we are working tirelessly to make sure that we purify this country of the impunity that is going on and the discrepancies in different uh, depart various departments of governance. So we, uh, were, uh, we were not uh, opportune to be in, in the seat of power. Mm -hmm. 
but we are going to continue advocating and continue doing the right thing to help the society. Mm -hmm. We have our structure. Before you knew, they were taunting us that we don't have structure. Yes. And when the election came, mm -hmm. they knew. But it actually proved uh, true. Yes. Because you didn't have structures, it showed. You didn't have uh, thousands of representatives. You don't have representatives in thousands of wards. Yeah, it's not about the rep thousands of polling units. Sorry, mm. they, like obedient movement mm. go beyond party. Okay. It goes beyond party. Mm. We believe in these two men, in mm. Peter Obi and Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed. Mm. Mm. They are people of unquestionable, clear and unquestionable track records mm. well in office. Mm. We know these people very well and we believe in them. Mm. They gave us hope. Mm. So it's not about the representative because you are representing your own but people. But if I may interject own, again, mm -hmm. um, so at least two of the callers we have heard yes. have said that you should, and they come from various, uh, you know, backgrounds. Joe uh, from uh, uh, Abuja, Shamaki from Nasara State. Both of them are saying that you should join hands to work with the president and move the country forward. We are going to continue, like, we are not going to give up on this country. Mm. And you know, there is a statement um, made by the Prophet himself, Prophet mm. Muhammad, that said, That's people's it. situation upholds mm. when justice prevails mm. in the society. Mm. So a, a society devoid of justice mm. will never be inhabited. So we, once you said we are going to accept that deceptive togetherness, mm. just because we want to please people, we, mm. we want to appear as godly, or we want to please the conscience of people, mm. then definitely we did not have a stand. Mm. And we have a very strong stand that we are looking for that justice, mm. no matter the cost. That's, that's a very important point. I mean, Jede, I have to pose this question to you. Some people believe that government of unity the idea of joining hands with me to work the, it's, 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 it's actually uh, uh, a ploy to destroy the opposition, to prevent the opposition from giving the government, uh, uh, keeping the government on its toes, which is the very uh, 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 function of an opposition party in a democracy or in a plural uh, democracy such as ours. How do you respond to that? That if you so, begin to have people like uh, Wiki that you mentioned, or people from Labour Party, others from NNPP, all of them in the federal government together with the, 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 the APC. What that means is that it will just kill the, the opposition, opposition altogether. All, all so, uh, I mean, we, uh, we just enunciated different ways by which you can engage. Mm -hmm. It's not mandatory mm -hmm. um, that you go serve. But it's the same philosophy that warrants, you know, power sharing. That we have a electoral system and a political system that talks about winner takes all. That it can lessen tension if you share power. That is what brought about the government of national unity. That rather than having everything and leaving the opposition uh, you know, in the lodge, bring, try to bring them and let them also contribute their own ideas. So, but um, if, they, if anybody doesn't want to participate, it's, it's okay. The other way you can engage is through constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. uh, civil society has been doing this. Uh, perhaps the literals will have publish something from Serap today. Mm. Every weekend, they, mm. they turn out one story or the other. Mm. Taking government to court, mm. you know, over these uh, 160 million yes. vehicles, uh, they have, they have voiced their court. opposition to it, and they have gone to court. So, that is one other way. Mm. Constructive, mark my word, constructive criticism. Mm. No government is perfect. Uh, look at what's, what's playing out. Julius Abure is the chairman of the Labour, Labour Party. Party. Said mm. there are members in National Assembly should not collect those cars. Mm. What they did they tell you? How to reject it? Ah, they said, <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, we should not collect. Okay, we have had you. Yes. Let's wait and see whether they will not collect. The point is, you know, our, our political parties are just platform for contestation. Mm. Many people don't even believe in the letter and spirit and the philosophy of their political parties. Mm. 
when it is convenient for people, they jump on the bandwagon. And that's the, what my brother's obedient movement. Mm -hmm. And you need to distinguish between Labour Party and obedient movement. Mm -hmm. Like he rightly said, obedient movement transcends party platform. Mm -hmm. People believe in the personality mm -hmm. of Peter Obi and Babadati mm -hmm. They are more in number than those who are registered members of Labour Party. Mm -hmm. The same way it happened in 2015 where a lot more people voted for Buhari mm. because of his person. But they, they, they are not members of the APC. Mm. The same thing that happened in Kano, that got Kwakwanso 1.4 million votes. Yes. 900,000 out of those votes he got from only okay. Kano. Mm. You got, because people believe in his Kwakwansia movement. Mm. And that is, you know, when you have charismatic leader, that's what he does. However, uh, let's engage in constructive criticism together from the political parties, from the civil society, from the media. We need to keep this government on its toes. Section 22 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has mandated the media to hold government to what? To account. So you, the, what we are doing right now is holding government to account to, to say you gave us a eight points renewed up agenda, mm. fulfill those promises. Come on, come on, come on. Let's come on, have man. the issues of security resolved. Let's have the issue of welfare of because section 14 subsection 2B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, has altered said security and welfare of citizens shall be the primary purpose of government. Mm. So. Whether you are partisan or you are non-partisan, you have the mandate to hold government to those accounts that welfare and security. So when there is security breaches all around us, we need to cry out. And there are different ways. One of it is what we are doing. I can write letter to the editor. I can write opinion article. I can call on, on live TV like this to hear my view. That is part of, because people in the presidency or in government are also watching, they are part of us. Yeah. And from what they see and hear us say, yeah. they may do things that will change the course of governance for the better. Mm, thank you, we have just two more minutes. So maybe I give you uh, those two more minutes. Yeah. Uh, 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 if we have the next three and a half years, uh, as Mr. Giorgio said earlier, what are your plans, you know, what do you think the opposition should be doing? You mentioned constructive opposition, opposition. earlier. Yeah. So what would this constructive opposition be, particularly as we move towards uh, the next election three and a half years uh, from now? Should we still be expecting uh, a Labour Party or... Uh, what was going to was it going to be like? Definitely, Labour Party has come to stay, okay. and we are coming back. Yeah. We are, we, as he said mm -hmm. earlier, um, constructive criticism is part of the thing we are going to do to help the government in discharging their own duties, and also we we'll make sure that we keep on keep on advocating for what we believe. He, I was interested in what he said um, about. Um, a politics of ideology. Mm. And that's what we like in Nigeria. If you go to the United States of America, they have two strong political parties, and the Republican and the Democrats. Mm. If you take, for example, um, people like George W. Bush mm. and um, Donald Trump, you found out that they have similarities in the mm. way they govern. But in Nigeria, it's totally not, not like that. Mm. So that's part of the thing we are trying to change in this country. Mm. We want to embark on politics of ideology, mm -hmm. not politics on like wearing a shade to win election. Mm -hmm. And once you win the election, you forget about the people, mm -hmm. you forget about the society that voted for you, you started planning for the next election as a President Obasanjo said, uh, instead of the next generation. Mm -hmm. So we can expect the LP members will not take the 160 million vehicles? Uh, no, I'm because not going they have to, different not... ideology. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's just a way to, to, to end. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jiri Ojo, uh, for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you, really. Comrade uh, Ismail Umar, also for thank, coming thank uh, on the thank show. It's been nice having both of you. And thank you also, our viewers, for staying with us tonight. And we hope that you'll join us uh, once again next week when we'll bring you another edition of Sunday Politics on Trust TV. Good night. My name is Suleiman Suleiman.